had a lot of firsts lately. A little while ago I reviewed the Zelos Thresher with a Damascus steel case and today I finally got a proper moon complication to feast my eyes on in the Orion from French brand Mo. The Orion series features three moon face models celebrating humanity's return to space. We've all seen an increase in missions to the moon lately from various nations, but the Orion spaceship through the Artemis program is designed to take astronauts to the moon and back, initially just around the moon and home, but the plan is to eventually establish a lunar base by 2027. This is proper science fiction stuff and I'm excited to hopefully see this happen. The Orion watch is designed around the trajectory of the spaceship of the same name and the model has a Celitas SW2881A hand wound caliber, which will be fully visible in the production model. Of course we all know a certain other watch that's been dining out on its moon credentials for quite some time now, but why couldn't we have another brand celebrate the moon and do it in the men's style here with an incredibly detailed depiction of not just the moon, but the Orion constellation too. The sky on the disc is an exact mapping of the Orion constellation. Thanks to the use of a femto laser, the reproduction of this star map is accurate to the micron, or a rather mind-blowing 0.001mm. You'll also be able to customize your mod on the website, which is a fun and exciting touch. I can see quite a few reasons as to why you should jump in and support the brand's effort with this beautiful model. And if you agree with me, then stick around to get to know it a bit better over the next few minutes. The exciting inspiration behind the watch also extends to the lovely packaging today with an almost bookshelf worthy box with some great artwork which in my experience is often the case with French brands. I think back on my time with the SYE model that had some brilliant art to go with, but today we're admiring this gorgeous work. The prototype is a good visual for what to expect, however I'm going to give you the updated sizes for the final model. It is exactly 38mm diameter and the lug to lug is 45.8mm. Lug width is 20mm and whilst the thickness of this model is 13.2mm, the final version with a sapphire glass to view the movement will be around 10.5mm. Weight is expected to be about 52g. It wears larger than its 38mm suggests but I'm very happy to hear that the thickness will be reduced which will really make a big difference. The dial is to my eyes at least very attractive. My only initial reaction was that I wasn't in love with the steel border around the inside dial and the moon complication. But lo and behold, that will also be removed, so good to hear. At just above the 6, we find the lovely logo emphasized by Starlust Hourglass, the Orion model name and automatic in French. It makes sense obviously to have all this here at the 6th position since the upper half is already occupied. The smallish date complication will probably be easier to see with no distracting steel around it. The polished leaf hands have slivers of loom and the seconds hand in orange matches the markers at 12, 3, 9 and the colour of the model name. Now this is where it gets a little complicated. The levels you see on this prototype will also be removed but the pattern stays the same. You might ask yourself what is the point of sending prototypes out that will have so many changes applied but personally I think it's absolutely fine. We are talking minor changes here and all for the better and based on feedback that's difficult to really capture until you have some hardware in your hands. So we have a minute track around the outside and an interesting line and numbers close to the moon complication. In French, of course, but in English, the synodic period is the amount of time that it takes for an object to reappear at the same point in relation to two or more other objects. In common usage, these two objects are typically Earth and the Sun. The time between two successive oppositions of two successive conjunctions is also equal to the synodic period. So thank you Wikipedia for that one. It's almost impossible to read, this is so small, but I like the overall impression of various markers and the depths it adds. Speaking of, the raised and applied indices are lovely, 
and I'm looking forward to the final production versions that appear to be ever so slightly thinner. Okay, so the main attraction is clearly this moon. The moon disc is the result of a collaboration with AJS Production, a workshop specializing in the miniaturization of watch parts. A new printing method was developed using a laser to burn a paint-coated layer of superluminova. The stars around the moon illuminates with varying intensities in the dark, depending on the degree of burning applied. This technique is claimed to be an industry first and enables faithfully reproducing the position of craters in relief on a porous, luminescent texture. As I mentioned, in the dark the Orion constellation can be seen, and I use that term loosely since you'd really need a loop for this. I will obviously spend some time in the loom section here, but I will say this, it's crazy what microbrands can produce these days, and the attention to detail here I'd say would rival any wash brand in the world. To set the moon complication by the way, you use the date setting mode and move the crown in the opposite direction. So you just set the full moon to when there is a <clears throat> full moon, or work out how many days until the next one and line up the edge of the moon to say 10 days away if that's the next full moon. So that's when the 1 to 29.5 day scale on the dial comes in handy. Now forgive me for brushing off the case pretty quickly, and I hope you see what I did there. It's a classic shape with brushed surfaces other than a chamfered edge that runs from lug to lug. The fixed bezel is polished, which will mean scratches of course and it holds a double dome sapphire crystal in place, as you would expect. I personally prefer slightly meatier crowns, but this one is fine. It's push-pull and signed, which is appreciated of course. Around the back, we currently have a model of our vessel, but as mentioned, this will be sent to the dark side of the moon, and we'll have a clear sapphire crystal instead, with a full view of what will be the Salita SW288-1M, manual wound caliber. This will help with the thickness, but I wouldn't mind personally a slightly larger crown with a change to a manual movement. The leather strap smells great. It's good quality, signed on both the buckle and inside, and it's quick release. Home run there and nothing else to say really, other than it being perhaps a tad short for my wrist. I personally prefer this watch on a blue strap, and this blue hybrid one from Artem fits the bill. So to the loom, it's just as good as you'd imagine, and will be even better in the final version with more crater data on the moon and better stars. I haven't touched on the price yet, but I will now. In addition to the configurator that will allow you to customize the watch, there is also a full rundown of costs and markups, which I think is both brave and highly appreciated. I've not seen this outside of Code 41 before, and I think it should stop the talk of too expensive for what it is, and all that stuff that tends to accompany microbrands on the various online forums. The final price will be around €1450 and will be launched on Kickstarter in September. It's always harder I've noticed for slightly more ambitious projects to get off the ground on that platform, but what helps here is that this is not their first release and based on that you can be reasonably sure that delivery will take place around May 2025. As per usual, you buy the creator as much as the product, so do your own research and then decide to back this brand, which should be another lovely addition to the many fantastic microbrands out there. Thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you next time. <laughs>